Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Naked Eggs Benedict. That's right, this stripped down version involves no poaching of eggs. Plus, we're not covering up anything with a hollandaise. But don't worry, we are gonna do another kind of very simple lemon butter sauce. So this really is gonna taste virtually identical. Oh, and there's another reason I call this Naked Eggs Benedict. But you have to wait till the end of the video to find out what that is. And to get started, the first thing we'll need is something to cook our eggs and ham in, which can be any kind of heat-proof ramekin or custard cup. But please note, a standard muffin pan will also work just the same. But either way, we will generously spread or brush some melted butter in the bottoms and around the sides. And as you can see, we want to do that on some kind of sheet pan, which is going to make it easier to get these things in and out of the oven. And once we have those prepped, and we're going to do one per egg, we are going to transfer in some sliced ham and for each one, I'm going to use two thin slices of this black forest ham, which tastes amazing, but unfortunately it came with lots of cracks and holes. So as far as your ham choice, this is like the worst case scenario, but it is still going to work. Since what we'll do is line the two slices up, so the solid parts on one slice cover up the holes and cracks on another, and then we'll take those slices and push them into the bottom of our ramekin, and we'll try to get that in as evenly as we can. And as long as it's fairly even along the top edge, it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Right, the ham is going to crease and pleat where it wants to. So just let it. And by the way, no matter how carefully and thoughtfully you do this, some of your egg will definitely find a gap and leak through. But we don't care, it's fine. It's still going to look amazing as you will see. And then once those are set, we'll go ahead and crack an egg into each one. But not directly. Right, I think we should crack these into a small bowl or cup first since we don't want any broken yolks in this. And also, if we see a piece of shell or something, we can pull that out. But anyway, using that method, we will carefully transfer one large egg into each cup. And then before these go in the oven, we'll go ahead and season them up with a pinch of salt, as well as a couple shakes of cayenne, which is optional here, but also mandatory. And once we have those seasoned up, they are ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, or until they look a very specific way, which I will show you. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and make this very simple lemon butter sauce. And we'll begin this with the juice of one whole lemon that I'm gonna squeeze in half at a time. And then to that, we will add a tablespoon of cold fresh water, plus a pinch of salt, unless you're gonna use salted butter, which you shouldn't. And once all that's in there, we'll turn our heat down to medium and we'll bring this up to a simmer at which point we want to reduce it by about half, which is impossible to measure with an amount this small. But that's okay, we're just going to get it close. And this is what it looks like not reduced. And then this is what it looks like reduced by about half. And don't go anywhere. This is going to happen very quickly. And once we get to this point, we'll reduce our heat to the lowest setting and then transfer in two tablespoons of cold butter that we've cut into slices. And as soon as that butter goes in, we want to start shaking and swirling the pan because we want to keep this butter in constant motion until it's just about entirely melted. And once that happens, we'll turn off the heat and we'll give it a few more swirls. And believe it or not, that's it. In just a couple minutes, we've created a perfectly emulsified lemon butter sauce, which should have this beautiful creamy appearance and slight bit of thickness to it, which is way better than just a pan of melted butter with some lemon in it which is what you'll get if you don't know this technique. And yes, we could sneak in a pinch of cayenne if we wanted, or a few drops of hot sauce. But as you saw, we put some cayenne on the eggs, so I think I'm okay. And you'll see as it cools down slightly, it will get a little bit thicker. All right, so our sauce is done and ready to use. And at this point, we'll go ahead and pull our eggs out of the oven, which after about 20 to 25 minutes should look like this. And what we're shooting for is eggs that are just barely set, Right, the white is just barely cooked through, but the yolk is still gonna be very jammy. And if we give those a shake, as you'll see, there's a little bit of a wiggle to them. And you can also check by poking with your fingers, but these seem just about perfect to me. And once we are happy with our eggs, we'll go ahead and toast and butter an English muffin, on top of which we will transfer our beautiful baked ham and eggs, which I think is most easily done by sliding a fork underneath and lifting it up and out. And as predicted, some of that white definitely leaks through the cracks in the ham. But who cares? This already looks better and cooler than regular eggs, Benedict. And we aren't even done yet. But having said that, 
since I have to take pictures, I do reserve the right to rotate these and position them with the best side facing forward. And then for an optional side, I like to do a little bit of a green salad with this, right? Just something crisp and acidic to sort of cleanse the palate between bites. But I will leave that to you. And then once we're done dressing up the plate, we can go ahead and spoon over our not hollandaise sauce. And why this sauce is so perfect is because what is a hollandaise? It's butter, it's lemon, and it's egg yolks. Well, if you're gonna serve this on eggs, guess which one of those ingredients you can do without? No, it's the egg yolks. So while this definitely doesn't look the same, it really is gonna taste virtually identical. And that's it, I like to finish this off with some freshly snipped chives. But of course, you go ahead and finish this any way you want. I mean, you are after all the Lady Godiva of whether your Naked Eggs Benedict gets some chiva. And that's it, our Naked Eggs Benedict is ready to enjoy. Oh, and no, that little black spot is not a bug. It was a toasted English muffin crumb that somehow got into my chives. I always feel like I have to explain those things. But anyway, let me go ahead and grab a fork and knife and cut one of these in half so I can give you a full frontal view of ideally what that egg is supposed to look like. All right, this bake method is not gonna give you as runny a yolk as a poached egg, but it's still gonna be very jammy and free flowing. And that, my friends, when you take that first bite and you have a little bit of everything on the fork, tastes exactly, exactly like Eggs Benedict. I mean, if you were blindfolded, you would not know the difference. Except you might think to yourself, this has all the flavor, but somehow it seems a little bit lighter. Well, that's because we didn't use and really didn't need the egg yolk in the sauce. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that if you really do want the super runny egg and you want to go with the classic poach method, I still think you should make the sauce like we did here and use that over the top instead of a hollandaise, which again gives us all those same familiar flavors without that extra possibly over the top richness. And I didn't do it on purpose, but in one of the test batches, I did cook my eggs too far accidentally and the yolk was pretty much fully set. And much to my surprise, it was still very, very good. So if you're one of these freaks in nature that does not like a runny yolk, I think this version of Eggs Benedict is gonna work out very nicely for you. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling Naked Eggs Benedict. Right, naked because we basically stripped down the recipe and also because those eggs are kind of exposed and not covered up with a thick hollandaise. But there's also a third reason I'm calling this Naked Eggs Benedict. And that's because this version is perfect for making just one portion, which means you can make it for yourself and eat it alone and you'd be able to do that with or without clothes. Okay, I guess that depends on the weather and your mood. But whether you enjoy this fully clothed or sans pajamas, I think this is every bit as good as classic Eggs Benedict. And for a few of the reasons already stated, maybe even better. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.